Hello everybody, welcome to the NC podcast. My name is Natasha Collins and I am the host and I'm also the founder of NC Real Estate, which is my firm of surveyors, which includes its members club for landlords and property investors. For all of you out there, if you haven't seen it uh, yet, I'm holding a live webinar on Monday, the 25th of January. It's the big, big traps you need to to avoid in the property industry in 2021. If you want to come and join me live, 6.30 p.m. UK time, Monday, the 25th of January, head on over to ncrealestate.co.uk forward slash January 2021. I am going to put the link below. One of the things that we have to talk about, which I know you've all seen, you've all been asking me, I've got emails, you've been at me on Instagram, I've seen you on Twitter, I see this is changes to leasehold because I know that people have been picking up on it. Um, I've certainly posted about it and my guest who you all loved the first time she came on is back. Katie Kendrick, hi. Hi Natasha. Thank you for coming back because you are the lady who is making changes within the leasehold industry and I wanted you to come back because so much is going on in terms of leasehold, leasehold reform. And I'm getting questions about, you know, what's happened? What does it mean? When is it actually going live? All of this. And I want to talk to you about it because I know that you're going to give everybody the honest truth of what's going on because there are some things which are floating about. I don't think they're necessarily true. So I'm just going to hand over to you. What's happened over the last week? Okay, so a week ago, the government announced um, the biggest, most radical reforms to English property law in 40 years. Um, basically, they've announced that they're going to take a massive, bold step forward to introducing common hold into this um, into England. This doesn't apply to Wales yet. We are hoping that they will follow. Um, and they've said that future ground rents will be set at zero, you have the right to extend your lease to 999 years instead of the statutory 90 years. Um, you will also, this the ground rent ban um, also applies to retirement homes, which is absolutely brilliant because the elderly are the most vulnerable, so we're really welcome that. Um, one of the biggies is they are going to abolish, and I love that word abolish, and um, they're going to abolish marriage value. Mm -hmm. Now to all of those people with short leases of less than 80 years, this is where marriage value kicks in. So I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute. So that's all fantastic news. Um, they're going to set up a common hold council, um, which means that they are really seriously looking forward to moving to a common hold structure in this country, which is very welcomed. Um, and hopefully this is going to be the step to the end of leasehold. Um, so yes, all, all the investors out there who get their money from ground rents um, will have to think about investing in an alternative, um, more ethical way. Mm -hmm. Question on that though. Are you seeing a rise in additional fees in leases as ground rents are being taken away? Because this is something that I'm concerned about. Yeah, so at this point, nothing has changed. So again, these are simply words from the government. We've heard positive words in the past, um, yet this is still not legislation. So currently we're all still um, have to adhere to the old leasehold law. Um, so, Yes, there is no changes and we still don't know when they're going to happen. And yes, we are finding that there are really onerous permission fees within the lease, contained within the lease. And remember now, um, there's going to be a little bit of a two-tier system going on here. So you're going to have the new leases, which have zero ground rent um, and 999 years, and you're going to have the current leaseholders who are stuck with the current leases, which they can't change because they signed up to them. And the devil really is in the detail. Um, we don't know what that's going to look like, but there is a lot of onerous clauses in current leasehold um, that can, so it's not simply a case of your ground rent doubles every 10 years. It's we we have to have, we pay £200 a year to renew our mortgages. We pay to um, extend our properties for permission to change our front doors. Um, you know, the, the list is endless. <laughs> The government are more than aware of these permission fees and the law, part of the Law Commission's work 
is looking at capping the amount that they can charge um, for these fees because it's the never ending battle of what is reasonable. Um, you know, people go to the first tier tribunal all the time to thrash out reasonable because we have, there is no clear definition. What's reasonable to me or you is completely different. So we do hope that they will be more open and transparent as to how much they can charge for these, these additional fees, which we call are the X factor, which they make a lot of money out of. Yeah. So that's, that's the bizarre thing. I've, I've certainly started seeing it in um, with my clients when they're buying leasehold. You read through these new leases. I just say to them, don't buy it. I wouldn't buy it. You know, all of these additional fees, you've got to ask for permission to have tenancy agreements. You've got to ask for permission for alterations, ask for permission for the paint color inside your house. Well, hold on a second. They don't own it. And they're not going to own it for however long. So yes, we still need to be really aware of that. That adds up and that is a ridiculous sum of money. So let's talk about first common hold, difference between common hold and leasehold. It's control. Mm -hmm. So currently leaseholders have no control over the properties that they live in because ultimately they don't own the land nor do they own the building. What they own is a lease, which is allows them to occupy that building for the set duration. So basically what, what a common hold would mean is obviously we, we need some kind of structure for those people that live in flats because we share the land that our homes sit on. Um, so a common hold structure would mean that you'd have greater control over to expenditure of managing agents of what they charge for and how much you have to pay. Mm -hmm. You know, at the minute, what it is, is that the freeholder, um, the managing agent works for the freeholder, they don't work for you. So if they want to, if they want to put a new roof on, which may well need doing, they, they can go to whatever contractor that they want to, and the leaseholder just has to foot the bill. So what a common hold structure would do, is it would give back the control to the people that actually own the properties and live and pay for the properties um, and the managing agent will work for you so you have greater control it's not that we're going to run rogue and not pay for service charges and things like that 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 isn't the issue here those bills still need to be paid it's about having control over who who you know what what they can charge mm -hmm. and what would be the process of going from leasehold to common hold if anybody wanted to do it well, if someone's listening how does that happen we're still, you know, um, what we need to make sure happens is that the Common Hold Council, which has been set up, is there to, is hopefully going to make sure that this time round, because don't forget that um, Common Hold law has been around since 2002, and people will say, well, it didn't take off then, so why is it going to take off now? Which is why it's so important that this time round, we get it right, mm -hmm. so that Common hold will be embraced by people and it will flourish and to do that we need to make sure that it is fit for purpose there's no point in in taking the next step to to transfer existing leaseholders to common hold if it's not fit for purpose so we need to make sure it's really robust and that is why the common hold council will be set up um, so what do we need to do to transfer to common hold? We, we don't know the answers to that yet because as it stands, there's still a, a lot of work to do, but this is a massive step in the right direction. And, you know, and I met with the, with the, with the housing minister last, last week, the um, Stephen Greenhall, and he said, you know, he's very clear with the direction of travel that this government is taking. And it is one of, of common hold. He's a massive big fan of common hold and it will happen. Um, so it's just, it's just a matter of time, but we will need to make sure this is right. People didn't adopt it last time. You could ask why, because there's too much money in leasehold. It can't, it won't work whilst leasehold is an option. Developers and investors are going to prefer leasehold because it makes them, it creates an income stream for them. So they're never going to willingly give that up, which is why we need to phase out leasehold and we need to make common hold a preferred alternative. The, the, the mandatory alternative to leasehold. And they say that, lenders won't lend on it. No, they won't lend on it because there's no demand for it. We've spoken to lenders. They're willing to lend on it if there's a demand for it. Now, the people that have control over the demand is the people that build these properties. If they're not building common hold, there won't be a demand. So, you know, it's not that lenders won't lend on them. It's that there's no demand for them as it, as it, as it currently is. And also the 2002 Act is so hidden. 
it's like all yes. the different variations to the landlord and tenant acts does every anybody know them they go back all the way to the 1920s anybody heard yeah. about those ones and yet we still pick different rules from different acts and i think this is the problem with the property law in the uk anyway it's so freaking confusing we have one of the most difficult property law systems in the whole world I, I, it blows my mind um then question for you because i think one of the big obstacles to getting this passed will be freeholders they they are the obstacle right mm -hmm. and they've obviously got land um that's worth something a lot of freehold ground rents are in pension funds and insurance you know tied up in their portfolios they have very deep pockets how do we get they will need to be compensated in some way they, they've got to be otherwise people's pensions and people's investments are just going to fall over how do we get around that to get to the place where all ground rents can be gone and you know we're, we're in that that kind of a system do you do you have any thought about that of course the developers are going to lobby really hard mm. now about this in terms of their human rights you know giving up marriage value and stuff like that they're not just going to roll over and accept that this is how it's going to be and of course they're going to challenge it um how can we get around that? You know, we, we, we don't want um, we don't want the freehold for nothing. We're not expected to be giving them or to be gifted them. But, you know, the government have announced that they're going to be doing an online calculator, which is much more simple, straightforward, you know, and, and like you just said, um, leasehold law is so immensely complex and there's so many different variables re regarding you know the different calculations for the premiums and how long you've got left on your lease and all of that and uh, so that all needs to go into the calculator mm -hmm. now you know it sounds fantastic that they're going to do a simple format but it all depends on who's formatting the calculator now there's no point you know they've said that they're going to make it leaseholder friendly so therefore we hope that the the sum at the end of when you put your figures into the calculator will come out to our advantage but that is so so you've they've got to get that right in the leaseholder's favor because if they input that calculator incorrectly then leaseholders will never be able to afford to escape the leasehold system and mm -hmm. um, so that's why you know it's 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 so important that we don't rely on the, the the sector to actually be the ones that create this online calculator because I do fear um, that they're going to put the wrong sums in and we will get the wrong outcome um, and that's not going to help us at all. Mm -hmm. I think the flip side of that though is if you think about the, the freeholders investment for them this is actually beneficial because if they can calculate based upon an actual sum how much the freehold is worth that means that they can actually forecast for it because at the moment it's still on a strange negotiating system where they ask a lot of money leaseholders don't then you know we're in a battle for a long period of time values change uh, you know it's, it's a nightmare and whilst yes they may be profiting from it still risky for them because they don't actually know how much that's going to be so i think no, but, from their but point they of know that they know that the game's up that they get more than oh, what for that's sure. worth because you know like, like you said they have deep pockets you know they 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 can afford to challenge at the tribunals and you know it, it's it's a it's a it's a david and goliath battle that they know um we we very rarely ever have have success in Oh no, I completely understand that. I'm just, I'm just saying, like as a kind of a tactic for negotiation. <laughs> Here go freeholders. You know how much your freehold is worth now because this is how much everybody's going to be paying you. Yeah. Like that's something. That's the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, this is going to, this is just going to go on for years and years and years of people saying it's unfair. You're taking our freeholds away. Yeah. But then what they'll also find. Um, and I guess we've started seeing it since the last time you and I spoke with, you know, even things around the cladding scandal, people just, 
you know, for these soldiers going bankrupt and having to hand the keys back, like it's it's at crisis point. Yes, um, it is really at crisis point, and the cladding scandal is, you know, it's far. It's the biggest. It's the biggest scandal ever to 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 hit this this the our housing market. It is just phenomenal. Um, and you know, all it it's purely highlighted that there's no benefit to having a freeholder at all because the freeholders aren't aren't that that knight in shining armor that are gonna come and rescue leaseholders. They're, they're just simply not, you know, people three over three years on from Grenfell and they're still going to sleep every night in unsafe homes. That is it's absolutely outrageous. Nobody wants to foot the bill. But they know that leasehold law says that the leaseholders foot the bill. It's just, if, if anything has actually tipped this over the edge for leasehold, it is the cladding scandal. Mm -hmm. It's stacked against us. And, um, you know, I don't know how that's going to end. But unfortunately, we're aware of people that have taken their own lives over this because, you know, it's, it's pretty grim. It's, it's the worst it, it could be for people. It is grim. And, and just the thought of being in those homes all day every day not knowing oh it's like it's honestly it, it would just be it's like being in a prison isn't it because you don't know what's safe if someone accidentally leaves like their hair straighteners on or people's mental health is so shot to pieces anyway that it, i can't even quantify it like something goes wrong with your house that building goes up mm. what like that's not how property should be designed. I, d I just um, and, and a bill, you know, they're responsible for a for a for a blank check at the minute. Yeah. Um, and no one has that kind of money because people are being, you know, furloughed, made redundant, businesses are folding. We're going into the worst economic crisis, and no one can afford it. Nobody can. Nobody can afford. I mean, obviously, there's people who can afford it, but. Leaseholders, I mean, you don't take on a building expecting that because the rules no. change between when you bought and 2017 and then they've mm. continued to change. And I will say that that's been one of the things over the last 12 months that I've completely disagreed with, with um, the RICS and what they've done, rushing these forms out, mortgage lenders <sighs> following on with what they're doing, then the RACS changing their tune because, oh my gosh, look, we might have been in a bad press moment. Mortgage lenders aren't going to change because they think it's a risk. Mm. The whole thing's diabolical. I hope that that gets... People don't think about the consequences of the decisions that they're making. That is for sure. And that's what we've seen within the industry. And it's too many bodies trying to, oh, let's save our backs, not save the people who actually have to live it every day. And that has been one of... I think the industry's most embarrassing things over the last 12 months, I have to say. Yeah, it's, 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 it's appalling that we're still no further forward now to making these people's homes safe. Um, yeah, it's, it's just awful. It's terrible. Awful. It's terrible. Mm. Um, I, I, I have no words. I have no words on the property managers who make the decisions, you know, two weeks before Christmas to kick everybody out of their blocks. I know. What 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 suddenly changed at, at that point? I know. It's like three a.m. in the morning. I'm having a sleepless night. Let's get them out. I don't want death on my hands. What? Why didn't you do something with the the fire risk assessment when you first got it? Again, it's people making bad decisions, and I do wonder if that's then escalated because of COVID and people being so anxious and overwhelmed and just not able to make a decision that's that's best fits people. However, not... Let, let's not forget that COVID has been here for a year. This climate yeah. scandal has been here for, for, for three oh, yeah. years. So, you know, we can't just keep keep blaming COVID all the time, you know, <laughs> like they didn't make a decision two years ago and they're still not making a decision like a year on from that. So, you know, I don't, I don't think that COVID, I think COVID's made things a lot worse for people, especially because we're spending so much more time in those properties that you're being told is highly flammable. Um, but yeah, um, I, d I just and, can't rationalize why you would make that decision. And these these freeholders, 
you know, that they're not poor people. They, they make such tremendous profits from the leasehold system. Um, you know, and, and most of these are offshore investment companies, you know, these, these are, these are the big guys. Um, and they're really not, they're really not coming, coming good at all. They're not painting themselves in, in any, any bright light at all. So back to your question, how can we compensate freeholders? To be honest, I, I, I simply don't, I, I think they've had enough profit from the leasehold system um, that, you know, they should get a fair price um, and that's basically it. You know, mm -hmm. they've profited for far too many years from this feudal system and they need to just give it up and walk away and embrace the change that is coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, how long do you think it will take? Oh, well, <laughs> um, we, we have been told that, um, th I don't get how parliament works. I'm, I'm not into politics mm -hmm. before this. Um, but they've told us um, the first sitting, hopefully for the ground rent ban, moving forward so that will be april 2021 to april 22 so that will be in that sitting and then all of the other um leasehold stuff will be in the following sitting which will be april 2022 to 23 okay okay um, so but you know i think we're going to have a fight on our hands if if you know if I know last week we celebrated because it's really important that we do celebrate the small victories that we do have um, but you know we won the battle we certainly haven't won the war and we don't think that it's all over now and we've suddenly won the fight because we haven't until it's in legislation our battle very much continues because the lobbying has just gone up a, a massive peg mm -hmm. and you know those deep pockets they're not going to sit back and agree with what the government have announced but you know the, the government have done their homework you know they're, they're quite confident on on the radical proposals that they've said are going to happen so um mm -hmm. as long as they stick by that you know then we have to remain positive that that the government will deliver but delivery isn't guaranteed no we see that time and time and time again yeah so what are you seeing going forward? Because I know just before we started this call, you said you were on a bit of a roller coaster. Last week was a high, this week's a bit of a low. What are we seeing in leasehold? What are your anticipation for the coming weeks, months? It changes on a weekly basis at the moment. It really does, you know, and leasehold is a roller coaster. A, a, a week ago, I was I was so happy with the news that they announced, you know, these are the words that we wanted to hear for so long. and come and hold I mean wow amazing um why am I down today well Robert Jenrick has mentioned that they're going to um look at getting rid of lease um, mm -hmm. the leasehold advisory service um which again we've said for many years that lease is not fit for purpose that's a tax taxpayers funded organization that actually has in our opinion turned and looked the other way for so many years um, all they'd simply do is, is tell you in your 15 minute phone call what leasehold law says and what your rights are within the law. That's no good when leasehold law is not fit for purpose. That is not the, 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 the support that leaseholders desperately need. The only support that they get is from the leaseholders charity LKP, which has got no funding at all. Mm -hmm. And basically they are the ones that have brought in all of these reforms if, if it wasn't for the LKP we literally would not be where we are today yet they don't get any recognition they get no funding so them announcing that they're going to be looking at, at reforming lease you think wow would, wouldn't you be pleased with that well no not if they're going to give more money to replacing lease with with a bigger organization mm -hmm. that is going to be another quango you know this, this needs to stop. It needs to have the people that really want to bring in change in those positions. And it's very much the same with the, with the common whole council that they've announced. Sounds fantastic, but it's no good if the wrong people are on that council. Same with lease. It's no point in having the same people that are responsible for creating this mess in the first place, responsible for finding the solutions. So we don't want a case of, you know, poacher turned gamekeeper 
you know, like we need the right people in those positions and they need to listen to what leaseholders want. And, you know, that is for, for them to, to fund the right organisations and not create more mess. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I completely agree with you. And again, devil is always in the detail. We, you know, they, they, they announced what they announced last Thursday and now everybody's gone into panic. The amount of, of messages that, that we've been receiving in the NLC with those people that have short leases below 80 years asking me what they should do. Mm -hmm. Should they wait or should they, or, 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 or should they extend their lease now? A really difficult question to answer and I'm not qualified to answer mm -hmm. it. So I clearly signpost people to the experts. Um, but you know, it's 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 a it's a difficult question for anybody to answer yeah. because if they wait and you know that that ticking time bomb is going down on their lease is already short. So you know, I really don't know what to advise for people. They remain in what we call leasehold limbo because they're 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 in that catchment now of if they wait, it could cost them more money. If that calculator is not is not programmed correctly, mm -hmm. that's true. That's true. You know, there's been so much debate over so many years of what the calculator for extension should be, what the calculator for buying the freehold should be, and it's never been agreed. I mean, did no. you, you've seen the Law Commission report, which was hundreds of pages long. Yeah. And none of yeah. it really made sense. It wasn't something that even I could understand. I tried going through it, couldn't, could mm. not figure it out. And that's the problem. There needs to be a calculation, and that is it. Yeah, and um, I do believe that there will be another announcement coming from the government regarding what the calculation is going to be. So we've not really, they've not really announced anything on the formula that they're going to use. Um, but you know, I, we know that the that the sector have been lobbying hard at the at the first tier tribunals to set something called a capitalisation rate really low. So if the government go for a very low capitalization rate on those lease extensions, then basically that's going to cost leaseholders thousands of pounds more than, than what it would have done three or four years ago, because, you know, the capitalization rate was around six, seven percent. You know, I, I know that at the first tier tribunal and upper tier that the, that the capitalization rate is going to two percent. Now that costs leaseholders thousands upon thousands of pounds and we we've spoken to the government about this and we've spoken to ministers about our concerns about them using this capitalization rate that will really disadvantage leaseholders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they've got to get it right they've got to mm -hmm. so is that the next step in the process what's your what's your next steps from here what where do you go where do we all go what do we hope for we go for making sure that they program the calculator correctly um ministers uh, as i said we 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 met with we met with a minister last thursday and the um also the mhclg we met with them and they're they're um they're very keen to continue the dialogue with us um so that's good that we are part we are part of the discussions and and you know they've simply said that they hear us and they you know they understand our concerns um now I'm sure they're getting it a lot from the other side as well because remember there's there's so many different outfits out there that are going to be arguing to keep the this this status quo um, and we are just the NLC and the leasehold knowledge you know LKP um, we just need to shout as loud as we can mm -hmm. and make sure that we do not let our foot off the accelerator because you know they, we're not going to go away and, until this is legislated and that it's it's fit for purpose because we need to make sure that the devil in the detail is correct for leaseholders because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to get this right, get it wrong and we are literally screwed. Um, so I will do everything in my power to make sure that the leaseholders um, have, have the overall um, say in, in how that's calculated. Katie, you're the hardest working woman in leasehold. <laughs> and for everybody who didn't know this before, you know, Katie is also a nurse. And so she's working in these hospitals. I, I asked you before, I don't know how you are staying sane. You are seeing two bad sides of two horrific industries. My, like, wow. It's, it's tough. It is, it's, it's tough on, on both grounds right now. 
Um, you know, I'm very lucky that I've got a lot of support around me with family. Um, but, you know, I have my bad days, you know, I, you know, I quite often shed a tear that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, I do feel like there is a lot of weight on my shoulders because, you know, um, everybody looks to me for the answers and simply I haven't got the answers. I, I will carry on shouting and I know what needs to happen. But, you know, there's there's not just me. There's, there's an army of leaseholders behind me. The National Leasehold Campaign, we have 20,000 members we got to this week. Mm -hmm. You know, we are growing. Um, leaseholders are uniting together. You know, so there is positives out of this. Beforehand, leaseholders didn't have a voice and you didn't know who to turn to. So, you know, the fact that leaseholders are now coming forward and sharing their stories, it's really, really helping to, for government to realise how, how toxic the leasehold system actually is. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a phenomenal <laughs> job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming back on my podcast today. I appreciate it so, 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 so much. Everybody who's listening, I'm going to put Katie's links again below go and follow the National Leasehold Campaign because they are doing awesome work and anything I could do to help, you know, I am right here to support you. Thank you, Thank you everybody for listening. I really appreciate it. And if you've liked this podcast, please don't forget to rate, review, share it because it's so helpful for other people to listen to this as well so they stay informed with what's going on in the industry. Thank you for listening today. I cannot wait to catch up with you again soon.